three stanzas, although, although it's supposed to be one stanza. The second stanza starts at, but at my back I always hear, and the third stanza starts at, now therefore, while the youthful heed. That was, that was, what page is the song? Page four. four. Alright, whenever you're ready. Is that now therefore? So the second stanza begins at, but at my back I always hear, and the third stanza starts at, now therefore, while they It didn't have one. So oh. I, I, I just picked it up. It's just it's mine. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, just mine. Not all of them were about eight stages. Now they're strong again. Now they're all ready. Alright, so the about. Had we but world enough and time, this coyness, lady, were no crime. We would sit down and think which way to walk and pass our long gloves day. Thou by the Indian Ganges side shouldest rubies find. I, by the tide of Humber, would complain. I would love you ten years before the flood, and you should, if you please, refuse, till the conversion of the Jews. My vegetable love should grow vaster than empires and more slow. And hundred years should go to praise thine eyes and on thy forehead gaze. Two hundred to adore each breast, but thirty thousand to the rest. An age at least to every part, and the last age should show your heart. For lady, you deserve this state, nor would I love at lower rate. But at my back I always hear Time's wee chariot hurrying near, and yonder all before us lie deserts of vast eternity. Thy beauty shall no more be found, nor in thy marble vault shall sound my echoing song. Then worms shall try that long preserved virginity, <laughs> <laughs> and go with great honor turn to dust. And into ashes all my lust. Ugh. The graves a fine and private place, oh, but none, I think, do there embrace. Mm. Now, therefore, while the youthful hue sits on thy skin like morning dew, and while thy willing soul transpires at every pore with instant fires, now let us sport us while we may, and now, like amorous birds of prey, Rather, at once our time devour than languish in this slow chapped power. Let us roll all our strength and all our sweetness up into one ball, and tear our pleasures with rough strife through the iron gates of life. Thus, though we cannot make our son stand still, yet we will make him run. <laughs> On the surface, to his coy mistress may seem like the desperate attempts of a thirsty man trying to a young woman. <laughs> However, through careful analysis, it is evidence that this poem is about a man's genuine love, which he realizes will only remain for a finite amount of time. The structure of the poem and the shifts in tone provide evidence for this man's realization that his love for this woman is both intense, but also subject to the progression of time. The affectionate tone in the first stanza is reinforced by Marvell's direct descriptions of the love the man has for this woman. Marvell uses metaphors to illustrate that the, that the man's love grows in size the same way that a vegetable does and that it can grow to a size and at a pace that is bigger but slower than that of an empire. Marvell uh, implements an allusion to the story of Noah's Ark to indicate that the man will always love his woman until disaster strikes. The religious allusion to the Jews is a reference to the fact that most Jews never converted. Therefore, the woman should refuse sex for eternity so his love can continue to grow. Marvell's worrisome tone in the second stanza is brought about by the man's fear for his love's end when death inevitably arrives. Sexual imagery is used in the stanza to emphasize the horrible consequences the elimination of their love will cause once death ensues. 
Marvell uses a rather gruesome depiction of worms taking the woman's preserved virginity to present the love interest the alternative if she does not express her love for the man now. Furthermore, the disintegration of her quaint honor and his lust represents the absence of virginity and sexual desire after life. Marvell's worry then transfers into the third <coughs> stanza where his tone shifts to an insistency that the woman will take advantage of the time that they have right now to avoid feeling any regrets once the unescapable arrives. The simile that compares the man and woman to birds of prey represents how the man is pleading the woman to devour the present moment so their love is fulfilled and satisfied. The ball that the man besieges the woman to make with him symbolizes passionate lovemaking that is so strong that it can control the sun, another symbol of the final control over time. Thank you. We're gonna just record Eric one day. Uno, dos, y tres. Ole! Don't worry, I'm recording.